2025 is eliminating over a dozen new vehicles and I'm going to share those with you. But the sad reality is a lot of those vehicles are vehicles that once we could afford. See, with this transformation into the electric vehicle space and the over complexity of a lot of these vehicles, it pushes people now to invest in a lot of these high price point vehicles. Now, unfortunately, the average transaction price has crept up. We're almost at $50,000 now. Would you believe it? $48,397 based on Edmunds information. But a big part of the reason it's not even higher is because 7.3% of those transaction prices are based on heavy incentives. That's right. Incentives have gone up drastically. As you can see by charts since September of 2022, we've seen major increases in the applied or application of incentives, which is getting people to even buy these vehicles. Otherwise, a lot of them wouldn't be selling. And we've seen this, we would see this drastic drop off in sales outcomes. But this $48,000 and change result is actually up 50% from 10 years earlier. Have wages gone up 50%? Not for most people that I know. But you know what? It's unfortunate because the fact that many of these new vehicles that are going away in 2025 are some of those that are in the below 48,000 range and they're rising the average. So what we're going to see in the next year to two years is a combination of less people being able to even get into the new car and SUV and truck market. And those that are, are going to push the market up because they're paying for these more expensive vehicles. Now, while we're hearing vendors like the VAG Group, Volkswagen, obviously they're scaling back, they're laying off workers, they're closing plants, and even Porsche's learning the hard way. They're even saying, you know what, we were gonna go all in with Pure EV on the Boxster, uh, Macan and all of those vehicles, they've decided, you know what, we're going to give it an ICE version variant. This was just recent news. Stellantis, obviously uh, a little bit of an argument there at headquarters with the CEO walking out and Ford is losing money on the sale of every one of their electric vehicles. This whole marketplace is very unstable, unsure, and very few people are able to afford this rising average inflationary cost of new car prices. But you know what? Let's break this down and I'm going to give you that list right now. And you know what? Sadly, I'm going to talk about the individual vehicles and how that might actually impact you. So first of all, what we're looking at is the Volvo S60. Bye bye. Just not a popular vehicle. Reliability issues. That one's not so much a cost of living factor. That's more of a reliability and reputational challenge. Subaru is also toasting the legacy. That one, it does come in typically below that average. So by eliminating vehicles like that, you're eliminating the option and getting lower price point vehicles. And unfortunately, that likely will be replaced with more expensive variants as a lot of these vendors are, you know, replacing their lower price point vehicles with slightly higher price vehicles, vehicles that may be electrified, hybrid, more technology added, or maybe just a facelift, call it something different and prices go up. Okay, let's go on to the next one. The Ram Classic, we know that one is above this price point, barely, but that was one of the most affordable vehicles and trucks in the truck segment. Unfortunately, Stellantis has decided to make that go away at the detriment of truck sales, of course. Nissan, we know Nissan is struggling for sales. The GTR is the big one. That's one that is going bye-bye this year in 2025. It doesn't look to be coming back anytime soon. And while there were conversations about a new version coming out with all kinds of electrification added to it, the current GTR that we know of today is going bye-bye for 2025, but that one will not have an impact, obviously on the average transaction price. If anything, it might um, you know, work it in, in the consumer's favor, but basically it's an expensive car anyway, and not too many people are buying Nissan products We've heard Nissan's issues 12 to 14 months and they may in fact be out of business. They're looking currently for an anchor investor and without that, they may not have a, a hope in heck. So we also look at Mini. The Mini Clubman in 2025 looks to be going away as well. Lacking sales popularity. It just didn't really catch on. While some people love it for its you know spry and sprightly looks and designs, it just isn't holding on. It's not, it's not doing enough sales and BMW is looking at making 2025 uh, Mini Clubman get gone. Now here's one that really hurts because when we talk about price point cars, and I've said this before, some of the things that are bringing these prices down or holding them, anchoring them down a little bit are the lower price point vehicles. And we can't even find a vehicle under $20,000 anymore. Sadly, this was the only one. And in 2025, the Mitsubishi Mirage 
is going away. And this is really painful because there are people out there that just need the bare, bare minimum, just need the basics, just need a minimal form of transportation. And the Mitsubishi Mirage, you know, relatively economical, relatively reliable, basic means is going away in 2025. That's sad and tragic. Maserati and the Ghibli, also going away in 2025. That's a higher price point vehicle. Should have very little impact. The sales were very minimal. Anyway, they weren't selling a lot of them. It's kind of unfortunate. Maserati never really got a stranglehold of the North American market. But as it stands, the Maserati Ghibli is going away. As is the Jaguar F-Type. We know I actually had an F-Type. I sold it. I loved it. It's amazing. I don't know why it never caught on, but it didn't. And while there's people out there who love them and swear by them, like myself... It just wasn't enough. The sales weren't there. We've seen decline in the last four to five years. Jaguar are falling off a cliff. Their internal combustion vehicles were all going away. And currently, the only thing that they have for sale pretty much is the F-Pace. With that said, those are going away as well. And there's a bit of a hiatus where you likely can't even buy a brand new one, or at least not factory order it. And what you're going to be welcome to is this new marketing campaign. And if you haven't heard what Jaguar is doing, it's quite bright and quite interesting. But I believe it's there to actually bring people into the brand, get flash, get attention, and get people coming back. Have you heard of the new uh, model 00 or 00? Quite an interesting looking piece. But as it stands, the F-Pace or F-Type is going away for 2025. Um, Q50 by Infinity, bye-bye. A lot of Nissan products that aren't selling well. And Infinity is the spin-off of Nissan, another vehicle. Not the worst, and, and actually, quite honestly, probably one of the more reliable Nissan products as it actually has a torque converter auto, it has some fun looks, has a great engine, and a couple of great engine choices, 300, 400 horsepower. Unfortunately, didn't really catch on, and Nissan's, you know, trimming the fat, and that's one of them, so it's bye-bye. Ford, as well, is getting rid of the Edge. We know the Edge was a popular vehicle, and actually, some would argue that it was one of the more popular and more reliable vehicles recently. And would you believe this? The Escape, one of their most popular vehicles. But I think what they're trying to do, in my personal opinion, is trying to stop the bleeding. The Escape's been around for a long time. Started out as a little boxy. You know, it came out with a collaboration with Mazda many moons ago when they had that square boxy, you know, body on frame design. And they transitioned in 2013 to this more of a unibody minivan look, you know, kind of a very cab forward look design. And then they switched it up here a couple short years ago. But the reliability has been very mixed, you know, with this EcoBoost engines have been very problematic. The 1.5s have been a big problem. And now they've got this leaky injector issue with the 1.5s. Lots of bad reputational issues. And it looks to be like the Escape is going away. But also, the sad part is the Escapes are some of those vehicles that are below that $48,000 threshold, the average transaction price. So by eliminating some of these vehicles that are high sellers and big numbers, you're, you're essentially going to see that average transaction price edge up. And sadly, pardon the pun, edge up. <laughs> but the Edge and the Escape, both vehicles below that number, are going to, again, additionally, slowly creep up that average transaction price. And I've told you this, probably by next spring, you're going to see over $50,000 as an average. The Chevy uh, Malibu, unfortunately, I also talked about this, how what they're doing now is they're replacing vehicles like the Malibu you know, Ford did it with the Fusion. Malibu is now, by this fall, is going away. It's pretty much done. It's gone. And it's unfortunate because the Malibu was not... Some people love it. Some people didn't. It certainly sold a lot to fleets. And some people just bought them anyway because they were low cost, easy to own and operate. Uh, but the sad reality is that was it for their sedans. Chevy got pretty much rid of all of their sedans. And what they replaced it with was a similar platform, but an SUV look... And now they're charging an extra eight, ten thousand dollars on the base sticker. So it's clear that it doesn't cost more to build the SUVs, but they're charging more as the popularity of SUVs is climbing. These Chevy products are, you know, they're waving bye bye to the Malibu again, pushing up the average transaction price and pushing the affordability out of our hands. Sadly, the Camaro, another one, also going away for 2025. It's unfortunate. Anybody who's driven a ZL1 1LE like I have. Absolutely spectacular performance. It's sad to see it go. It's basically a Corvette in uh, practicality or a, or a jumpsuit. So it's a great vehicle. Too bad. Bye-bye. Cadillac, the X-T4 SUV. We know that's being swapped out for an electric vehicle. But we also know it was one of the most effective, most cost-effective vehicles. One of the most aff affordable price point Cadillacs in the fleet. And now that going away, 
they're replacing it now with an electric model that's going to be rebadged and relabeled something different. We talked about that as well previously, but sadly, the X-T4, one of their most affordable vehicles, subpar to that 48,000 price point, is going away. Again, likely to see that average transaction price rise. Sad state. And now we have the Audi A4 sedan, the A4, not a great vehicle, in my personal opinion. I don't think a lot are going to miss it. There are people that do swear by them, but you know, the EA888 engine, that turbo two liter, there's been nothing but problems with that vehicle since the second coming. 10 years, 15 years ago, you know, the A4s have always been a bit problematic. I've always said this too, go with the, you know, the S5, you know, S4s and the uh, RS4s and go with the, the hotter engines. Usually Audi puts a little more blood, sweat and tears in there, but the A4 sedan is gone as well on 25 and L also is the Alfa Romeo. Quadrifolio and the Julia. Um, it's a sad state, but the average transaction price have crept up 50% in the last 10 years. It's obvious that it continues to rise. And we're going to see a much steeper rise, in my own personal opinion. Sure, while this incentives, 7.3% in the last run here has been enough to sort of bolster or, or, or hold back, anchor back those prices a little bit. There's only so much these manufacturers can do. We also see a lot of these vendors have nowhere to go but charge more and more and more. As this transformation to electric vehicles, the research, the development, the battery costs, and, and all of this technology just puts more money into these vehicles. And that translation means more cost for you, the consumer. It's a sad state, but here we are. We're in a place where we can barely afford to buy a new vehicle. And with vehicles like the Mirage and the Escape going away, it just basically means our choices are fewer and far between other than buying a much more expensive electric or hybrid vehicle. That's just the way it's going. And definitely, if you want to see what a lot of people are doing right there, that's a choice I made, buying and fixing my old pickup truck. It's a great solution, and a lot of people are doing that, holding on to what they've got because these rising prices on new vehicles are getting so out of hand. But I want to share that list of the some of the top vehicles that are actually going away for 25. Hope that helps in your shopping of your next new vehicle. Hope to see each and every one of you real soon. Bye-bye.